What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a few different products from Anchor. Right here in the middle we have the Anchor Prime 8-in-1 240 watt desktop charging station. And then here at the sides we have two different power banks which both have a large capacity and fast charging speed as well. If you aren't aware of who Anchor is, they started out as a small company making chargers and USB cables several years ago. But over the years, they have grown into a huge powerhouse company that now makes a ton of different products, both under their Anchor name and other sub brands as well. But going back to the chargers, I actually own many power banks from this company, including some I've had for over 10 years that still work great without any issues. Yes, you can go on Amazon and find some cheaper options, but typically things are cheaper for a reason. So in my opinion, it's usually worth it to pay a little more to get a product that you know is going to last. All right. So first off, let's take a look at the Anchor Prime 240 watt 8 in 1 desktop charging station. This is definitely one of, if not the best upgrade I've done to my computer setup this year. Nowadays, it's pretty standard that a lot of us have a ton of tech that we either use or store at our desk. Personally, I have my Oculus Quest, a portable console, my tablet, a camera, a drone, and honestly, the list just goes on and on. If you have a lot of tech like me, you either have a bunch of chargers or you have one or two cables that you have to share for everything. Having one or two chargers is usually fine until you want to charge a few things at once. And then you end up in a situation of having to connect some more chargers or waiting till something is finished charging. As I said earlier, this can put out a max of 240 watts. There's a bunch of cheaper charging docks out there that are only 100 to 150 watts, which honestly is still not that bad. But the problem with those is the more you plug in, the more it has to spread out the charge. But with this, you have enough power to charge a ton of different devices without having to sacrifice any speed. So taking a look inside the box, you get the actual charging dock itself, and then you have an external power adapter. As you can see, this is a very, very compact charging station, especially for something that puts out this much power. In comparison, I have a Galaxy S9 an older phone here, and you can see just how much smaller this is. This is not a very large screen at all, and still this looks a whole lot smaller. Here's an old power bank I have, and then right here I have a Pepsi can just slightly larger than a Pepsi can and obviously much, much thinner. As you can see, this is a massive power adapter. This is probably the biggest power adapter I've seen so far. And I think that's because they put all the charging pieces inside of this. This way, this large thing can be plugged into the wall out of sight. And then you have this much more smaller and compact thing that's gonna sit on your desk and barely take any room. All right, so I got the dock charging in, and by far my favorite feature of this dock is this screen right here. It looks a little dim on camera, but in person it's very visible. Just my studio lights kind of wash it out. But this shows the real-time usage of every single port. So if I click on this, you have a readout for all ports right here. You have some more detailed information here that shows the volts and amps. And then right here you have the overall total. I don't know what it is exactly, but I just like seeing the numbers for things, especially when my devices are charging at a higher speed. It's good to know that they're getting the max wattage that they can get, and I'm going to get the fastest charge possible. So taking a look at the ports, first off, right up here, you have two AC outlets, and these have buttons to switch them on or off as well. I definitely like having these as not every device has a USB port and I'm someone who has a lot of tech. My YouTube channel, I'm constantly testing things out, evaluating things. So having this on my desk, I have two outlets right there that I can easily access and I don't got to go fumbling with the power strip on the floor. On this side, you just have a button and this is to change the different readouts on the screen. Over here, you have two USB-A ports and right in front, you have four USB-C ports. So on these USB-C ports with one item plugged in, you can get a max of 140 watts. I don't think there's many things out there that use 140 watts these days. There probably are some here and there, but most things usually use about 100 watts or less. As I said earlier, you have 240 watts to share among all of these ports. According to the specs, this can charge a 16-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 53% in only 30 minutes. So definitely a very quick charger. And if you're someone who has a MacBook Pro, you know how large those charging adapters can get. With this, you can get rid of that and now you can conveniently charge everything right from this little box on your desk. 
All right, let's go ahead and test this out. See if we can get it to put out that 240 watts as advertised. Right here, I have my 14 inch MacBook Pro. I think this tops out about 80 to 85 watts of max charging. Right now, I have it at 50% batteries. Let's see what this puts out. So it looks like we're getting about 76 watts, 77 watts. One thing to note is it is important what cable you use. Any standard USB-C to USB-C cable is only going to put out 60 watts at the most. To get 100 watts and up, the cable does have to be certified to use that. So a while ago, I actually tried it with this cable. It was only getting 60 watts. But with my anchor cable that I have from the power banks, as you can see, it's putting out a much higher 77 watts. So let's go ahead and plug in one of the power banks that I'll be reviewing shortly. Another older cable I have, as you can see, also from Anchor. But this is a right angle cord that I use with my Oculus Quest or Meta, whatever it's called these days. Now we're ready up to 154 watts. It's putting in 76 watts into this power bank. A few seconds later, now it's putting in 99.3 watts. This charges at a max of 100 watts. So this is charging at pretty much its full speed. So let's go ahead and add the second power bank into the mix. This has 75%, so I'm not sure what it's going to charge at. But it should give us enough to get to that 240 watt limit. So it looks like we're getting about 230, 231, 230, oh, 239.90. There we have it. Pretty much 240 is putting out its max capabilities now. So definitely good to see that it puts out its rated power. Again, 240 watts from this tiny thing on your desk is definitely very cool to have. And keep in mind, this isn't just for a desk. This is going to be good to use on a living room coffee table, in your bedroom, on the nightstand, in the kitchen, pretty much anywhere where you could use USB charging ports. And then since it has these AC outlets on top, this is pretty much a supercharged surge protector. So once again, definitely one of my favorite upgrades to my computer desk. And I can definitely see myself in the future even getting a second one of these as well. So up next, we have their Anchor Prime 27,650 milliamp power bank. And this can charge at a maximum of 250 watts. As far as construction quality is, this looks and feels very premium. The front of this kind of reminds me of an Apple Watch. And honestly, if you covered this logo and told me this was a power bank made by Apple, I would definitely believe you because again, it just looks and feels very premium. As you can see, just like the desktop charging station, this also has a screen on front. On the first slide, you have your overall percentage. You got Bluetooth. This also has app connectivity, which I'll go over shortly. And then right here, it shows you the battery life as well as the internal temperature. And then you also have a detailed screen that shows you your percentage, your real-time charge left, and this will change depending on what's plugged into it. And then you also have your input and output voltages here as well. So as I said earlier, this can put out a max of 250 watts. So this is just as good as the desktop charging station, which is pretty impressive for a power bank of this size. It is a larger power bank, but considering the amount of power it has inside and the amount of power it can put out for charging speed, definitely very compact. Right up top, looking at the ports, you have two USB-C ports, and these can both put out a max of 140 watts. And then you also have a USB-A port that can put out 65 watts. I honestly had no idea USB-A was even capable of putting out 65 watts, but I looked it up and apparently it's something only some phones support. So if you have one of those phones, you are going to be able to get that full 65 watts from this port. So this does support charging through all three ports at the same time. But just to keep things simple, I'm going to ignore the USB-A port for now. So with one USB-C port, you can get 140 watts from either port. And then if you're using both USB-C ports, you'll get 140 watts from the top one and 100 watts from the bottom one, which again is very impressive for a portable power bank. As I said earlier, this has a capacity of 27,650 milliamps. With this, you'll be able to charge a laptop, Steam Deck, and other similar devices about one to two times. With a tablet, you'll get about one to three charges depending on the model. And with most phones, you should get about three to five charges, once again, depending on the model of the phone that you have. When it comes to charging the power bank, this is also very fast as well. This can charge from a single USB-C port at a speed of 140 watts. Or if you want an even faster charging speed, you can actually charge through both ports at the same time, which will give you 170 watts. 
definitely a very cool feature and also the first time I've seen this on any power bank. According to the specs, when charging from both ports, you'll be able to charge this very quickly from 0 to 100 in only 37 minutes. So I got it plugged in on both ports and we're getting a little over 150 watts, but it is at a higher battery percentage. So once this is lower at about 50 and under, that's when I'm sure you'll get that full 170 watts as advertised. And last but not least, this power bank has a capacity of 99.54 watt hours and the TSA has a limit of 100 watt hours. So despite its large capacity, this can actually be taken on a plane as a carry on device as well. So as I said earlier, this does have app connectivity and this is what the app looks like. Right now I'm charging the power bank and it shows that right here and it's charging at 138 watts. If I'm charging something from the power bank, it'll also show you the output and it does show for every port as well. And it also shows the volts and amps. So again, if you're someone like me that likes looking at the numbers, this is fun to look at. And then right here you have real time data. This is a chart that tracks your input and outputs. So it tells you what was being put out and when. So up here is the overall, and then you also have tracking for the individual ports as well. And then right down here, you also have more data. And this is the first time I've seen this with any power bank. It tracks throughout the life of the power bank, how much power it puts out and how much power it receives. So right now it's been charged with 54.4 watt hours total, and that's throughout its life. And then it's put out a total of 130 watt hours. Then it also shows you the battery cycles as well. So as this battery gets older, you'll be able to see its life based on these cycles right here. Another cool feature right here, it also has number of charges available. So if you have a, say, iPhone 14 or S21 Ultra, you can put that here. And based on the amount of power that it has in here, it'll tell you exactly how many times it can charge that specific device. So instead of guessing, okay, maybe I got half a charge, maybe I might charge it two times. Takes out all the guesswork and it tells you exactly right here on this little section. And then diving into settings, you have a few things you can change here as well. You got your device screen. You got two different things you can choose from. You have optimized charging, which is schedules that you can set for the input and output. So for output, it says during this time, the power bank output will be reduced to extend the battery life of mobile phones and other devices. So right here, you can set what time you want that to happen and on what days as well. Similar to a phone, you even have find device. So if you don't know where your power bank is at, you can go in here, search now. It'll connect. And as you can hear, the power bank is now ringing. So you can quickly find it and know where it's at in your house. So once again, definitely a lot of unique features that I have not seen before on a power bank. I totally forgot to mention it, but the desktop charging station does have an app as well. With this one, it's only Bluetooth, but the desktop charging station has the option to run it on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So with this one, you can check the stats while you're in front of it, or you can be across the entire world and still be able to check the stats from your phone as well. And overall, it's pretty similar. You have your wattages, readouts, and your chart. So pretty much the same experience for both devices. But again, like I said, this one is only Bluetooth, and this one is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And last but not least, I have the Anchor Prime 20,000 milliamp power bank, and this one charges at a max of 200 watts. Design-wise, it is basically the little brother of this power bank here. As you can see, they are identical, but this one is just slightly shorter. And then depth-wise, they are the same exact size. So taking a look at the front, you have the same screen, but this one is a little dimmer and a little smaller as well. So side by side, even on camera, you can see this one is a little brighter and I do have them both set at their max brightness. Coming up top, you have a USB-A port, which can also charge at 65 watts. And then you have two USB-C ports that charge at 100 watts each. As I said earlier, this is a 200 watt power bank. So you can actually charge at both of these ports at the same time at that full 100 watts. I got it charging the other power bank and as you can see it is putting out that full 100 watts as advertised. Unfortunately I don't have something else with low battery to test that second 100 watt port but judging by the previous test I'm sure it's going to do that no problem at all. So when it comes to charging the power bank this charges at 100 watts which will charge it from 0 to 100 in only 1 hour and 15 minutes. So slightly slower than the larger power bank but overall still a very good charging speed. When it comes to the charging abilities this battery can charge a laptop about 1 to 1 and a half times, a tablet 1 to 2 times and depending on the model about 2 to 4 charges with most phones. 
All right, so when it comes to the charging dock, I think this is something that if you're someone who needs it, you're gonna know right away that you need it. I'm someone who has a lot of tech, and like I said earlier, I wanna get the fastest charging speed possible. So when I saw this, I just knew I had to get it. If you're not someone that needs the fastest charging speeds, or maybe you don't have a lot of technology that draws a lot of high power, I definitely recommend getting a desktop charging station like this one regardless, as it just makes everything look a lot more clean and organized. So if you don't need a high power charger like this one, check out Anchor's website as they do have some more affordable models that charge at a lower wattage. So when it comes to the power banks, these are both very good power banks and you can't go wrong either ways. Which one is better for you honestly depends on your personal usage. These both charge devices at fast speeds. They both get charged very quickly as well. With both power banks, you kind of have to sacrifice something. So I guess in the end, it depends what is more important to you. With this one, you have a bigger capacity, but you also have a bigger size. And then this one, you have a smaller capacity, but it's also a lot more compact. Again, you can't go wrong either way. They're both going to charge everyday devices very quickly. As I said earlier, most devices still charge at about 100 watts or less. So both of these are going to be able to handle that no problem. Another benefit of having portable power banks like this is being able to charge in an untethered way. So I'm someone that likes to work on my laptop when I'm editing videos, I'll be on the sofa, maybe a kitchen table, sometimes outside. And when my battery gets low, in a typical situation without a power bank, I'll have to get my charger, plug it into the wall, stay in that spot and charge there. But with this, I can just grab this, put it next to me, plug it into my laptop. And now I still get a wireless laptop experience. And I also get the benefit of being able to charge my laptop as well. So besides going out and using this on the go, I also find these very convenient to use at my house as well. This is a little larger than most power banks because it can charge at a much faster speed. So if you're charging your phone, you're not going to need something like this. This is just complete overkill for a phone. So with this, I'll use this on my laptop, Steam Deck, any devices that need a quick charge. And then if I'm just using my phone, this is where a smaller power bank like this is just way, way more convenient. And I can easily just put this in my pocket or most of the times I'll just have a small cable like this and I'll just carry both around and it's still very light. So either ways you go, if you don't already, definitely pick up a smaller power bank like this as well. Overall, these are definitely great chargers. As I said earlier, Anchor is definitely a brand I trust. In my experience, they not only make great products, but products that are actually built to last as well. All in all, if you happen to be shopping for a power bank or desktop charger, I would highly recommend any of these here from Anchor. If you would like to purchase or get more information, I'll also put the links to these in the description as well. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.